last thing we're going to talk about today is uh, container gardening. Container gardening is a great alternative for people who don't have access to an in-ground or raised bed garden. So if you rent your home or if you live in a small apartment in the city and you don't have any garden space, you can build a fantastic garden in containers on your porch, on your balcony, um, on your stairs. They're also a, a great uh, way for people who are just getting into gardening and want to start small. Just a few container planters out in your, on your front step can be a great way to get started. And they can really help um, if you don't have great access to sunlight all around your house. You can just focus on an area where you have ideal growing condition, conditions and just put a few containers out. Uh, you can grow an amazing variety of vegetables and even some fruits um, in containers right outside your front door. So let's talk about some of the things you need to consider um, to, to be very successful in your container gardening adventure. So just like with an in-ground garden or a uh, raised bed garden, the first thing you want to consider as you plan your container garden is the soil. So um, in most situations with a container garden, you're going to be bringing in soil from elsewhere. It's not something you're going to have on site. And commonly, uh, you're going to buy a bagged soil. So um, you want to start with a potting soil. Make sure you're getting a potting soil, not a seed starting soil, because seed starting soil uh, doesn't have much nutrient content and uh, it won't have sufficient nutrients for your plants to grow. So make sure you're getting a potting soil. Um, and there are a whole slew of different potting, potting soils out there, um, and the whole scale of really bad to really good. So um, it can be overwhelming. Um, I, think, I think the easiest way to get a good potting soil is to buy it from a source you feel good about. For example, down the road from me, um, there's a small locally owned organic growing supply store. And I can generally feel pretty good about what they're going to have on hand for a bagged potting soil. Um, if I go to the large box store down the street um, and get their generic potting soil, I'm not going to feel very good about what's in that. So it pays to do your homework. Um, the labeling laws with potting soils are um, minimal at best. So a potting soil that says it's organic um, may not necessarily have 100% organic material. So you want to read your ingredient list and do your homework. Um, also, you want to be aware of things like biosolids. Um, when your potting soil lists biosolids as an ingredient, um, this is generally sewage sludge. And even if your potting soil or bagged compost um, has sewage sludge in it, the labeling laws do not require it to be listed as such. So um, again, it pays to do your homework because sewage sludge is nasty stuff. Um, it's what's left over after they have cleaned sewage in order to make clean water. And everything that is taken out to leave the clean water behind is what's in your sewage sludge. So any pharmaceuticals that people have been taking um, and ends up in wastewater, uh, any, any soaps and chemicals they pour down the drain, um, the Drano they put down the drain to clear out the clogs, all that stuff is in the sewage sludge. Um, so it's really not something you want to be growing plants you're going to eat in. So make sure you do your homework and uh, learn what's in your potting soil. Another thing to look for with potting soil that can help you feel pretty good about it is that it's OMRI certified. OMRI stands for the Organic Materials Review Institute. And they're a nonprofit that provides uh, independent reviews of materials intended for organic growing uh, and production. So um, if something has been certified by the Organic Materials Review Institute, you can feel pretty good about the ingredients in there. Um, if you can't find something that's been certified by OMRI, you just really want to do your homework. Um, read the ingredient list, uh, go to their website, learn what you can before you grow the foods you want to eat in that soil. Um, a company that I feel pretty good about um, is called Fox Farm. And they, this product is available at my local organic growing supply store. And um, they actually are not OMRI certified. So when I called them to question them about that, they had an interesting explanation. And um, one of the products in their potting, um, potting soils and compost and, and other soil amendments that they sell is granite dust. And because granite dust does not actually have any carbon content, it can't be certified organic. 
And so they can't actually get that certified organic um, OMRI certified label because of this, uh, this granite dust. So it's a process they're working on. Um, but because I did my homework and I talked to them and I, I feel pretty good about what they're doing, um, I still continue to go ahead and use that product. So, so that's a choice you can make for yourself about the products that are avail available around you. But again, you want to make sure that um, with any garden, container gardening included, you, you start with the soil. You want to feel good about the soil that you're growing your food in. Within the uh, course materials that are included in this course, you'll find some information regarding um, products that contain biosolids, that known, known products that contain biosolids, so you can refer to that. But don't consider that an exhaustive list, um, but it is a place to start. Um, another uh, thing you'll find in, in those materials is a recipe to make your own potting soil. So if you don't want to go with a, a bagged product, you can, um, you can source the various different ingredients and, um, and try this particular recipe. recipe. It was, it was uh, something I found through uh, Organic Grower. So check that out in the materials that come with the course. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about that you need to consider with container gardening is ensuring that your containers have proper drainage so that your plants don't suffocate. Uh, plants need air as much as they need water, and if there's no drainage in your containers, then your plants are going to die. So um, most, most gardening containers come with drainage. Um, if you're creating a container out of something that wasn't originally intended for, for gardening in, then you need to add um, add drainage, you know, drill lots of holes. Um, the holes don't need to be huge, but there do need to be a lot of them. So make sure you consider drainage. Um, the next thing to consider is water. Your container plants uh, will probably dry out faster than any garden you have planted in the soil because the, um, you know, the quantity of soil available to hold water is less. So your plants may need more frequent watering when they're in containers than they might when they're just in the ground or in a raised bed. So, so check the soil, stick your finger in the soil down about an inch or so, and uh, make sure there's moisture in there. It doesn't need to be soaking wet all the time. That's not good for your plant either, but there needs to be moisture in the soil. So um, you may have to water more with your container garden. Another thing you have to consider with container gardening is the size of your container. The general rule of thumb is the bigger the better. The more soil there is available to your plants, the more nutrients, the more water, um, the more space they have to grow. So um, you want to make sure that your plants have an adequate size container to grow in. Another thing to consider about container gardens is the strength of the structure that you're um, putting your container plants on. Uh, if you're growing, you know, citrus trees in a container on your porch, it's going to it's going to take a really large container. It's going to hold a lot of soil. There's going to be a lot of water in there. So you want to make sure that the, your your stru your structure is um, sufficiently strong to hold these containers, and you're not going to knock over your porch. Um, when you're filling containers with soil, you don't necessarily have to fill the entire container with soil. If you're using a really deep container, you might be able to fill the bottom part of the container with rocks or, or uh, wood chips or something that's going to um, hold, it's going to let the water drain out. But if, if, if it's, if, um, if your container is so deep that the roots are not going to use the entire depth of the container, then you certainly don't need to put soil, um, fill that container entirely with soil. Um, so these are some things to consider when you're thinking about containers, and certainly be creative. Um, you can you can really add a lot of visual appeal to your your garden by uh, being creative in the in the colors and and uh, types of containers that you use in your container gardening. Don't forget about access to sunlight. Uh, full exposure to sunlight is generally considered six hours of sunlight in the day. So um, you want to make sure that your plants get sufficient sunlight based on their needs. The cool thing about container gardening is that you can access those nooks and crannies around your house that might really get full sunlight and you may be able to grow some plants that you might not be able to grow otherwise. You can also benefit from some of the microclimates of uh, container gardening. If you're, if you're getting some great southern exposure on one side of your house, that's going to be the heat and intensity is going to be beefed up even more if, you're, if your plant is actually in front of a wall that, uh, that absorbs some of that sunlight and, and makes, makes that little microclimate even hotter. So again, you may be able to grow something in a container in a hot corner outside your house that you might not be able to grow in your garden in your backyard. So cool things about container gardening. 
the the last thing we want to talk about with container gardening is uh, fertilizing. Container plants often need a little more fertilizing than your garden might. Again, their the quantity of soil they have to grow in is smaller, and so you need to you need to add some plant food. Um, there are products you can buy, for example, through the Fox Farm that I mentioned. Uh, they make a variety of plant food products that are um, that I feel good about the source of ingredients. You can make that decision for yourself, but uh, you may want to add some nutrients to your uh, container plants throughout the growing season. Um, you can also create your own uh, food plant nutrients through compost tea or through uh, worm compost. That's a topic for another day, but um, those are great sources of nutrients that you can add to your container gardens. Some plants are known heavy feeders and they need a lot of food, like tomatoes. So before you make your decisions about whether or not you need to add uh, food to your plants and to your soil, uh, consider what you're growing and, um, and if they're really going to need, need some fertilizer. Um, obviously, looking at your plants will tell you a lot too. If they're obviously looking yellow or uh, just not growing very well, then some, um, some fertilizer and plant food could make a really big difference with your container gardening.